Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and the true secret weapon of the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been the mind of Tony Stark. The way he applied his many screw-ups into ingenious upgrades throughout many generations of tech. Now sure, he's dead, but as I've been spending this quarantine period in the Blue Dungeon Mark II re-watching the Infinity Saga, you start to see the lessons that Tony learns each movie are subtly applied in MCU films that come out years later. We talked about some of these applications with Tony's armor after Endgame came out, but even deeper secrets are only now being dredged out of this autopsy. Ew, no, David. That, if you extrapolate this evolution forward, might tell us where the MCU could go next. Okay, so in my recent re-breakdown of Iron Man, check it out, I pointed out how Tony learns that true change comes from the heart. And he takes away two key lessons from his nemesis in this film, Obadiah Stane. First, that you can disable an enemy by going for the heart. Obi does it to him, and in the next movie, Tony disables Whiplash in their first fight in the same exact way. But Obi also tells Tony this. There's so many applications applications for causing short-term paralysis. Tony will reapply this lesson against Thanos on Titan, using Mantis to trap Thanos in short-term paralysis so that Tony, like Obi did, can claw away the priceless weapon to eventually redirect it against him. And then in Iron Man 2, Tony builds on his shortcomings from the first film. He upgrades with a portable version of his armor, the Mark V suitcase. But when that armor is vulnerable to Whiplash's electrical attacks, Tony later upgrades that version to absorb electrical currents. Power at 400% capacity. How about that? And then later in Endgame, Stark again uses that function. Okay, Thor, hit me. In Iron Man 2, Ivan Vanko also tells Tony, If you can make God bleed, then people will cease to believe in him. And then in Infinity War, Tony will later draw just a bit of blood from Thanos to show that that god can be killed. In Iron Man 2, Tony learns the value of his father's legacy, that one genius alone is limited by his time and by whatever is in his box of scraps, so he must share his knowledge. And Tony learns that the answers to the future are often found in the past, a lesson he applies in Endgame. But Tony has a bit of a less profound takeaway from these events, Vanko's drone fleet strategy. Drone better. When the events of the Avengers scare him into wanting a suit of armor around the world, he responds in Age of Ultron with a Vanko-styled Iron Legion drone fleet. Big mistake. Now, the Mark VII armor introduced in the Avengers builds on the relatively slow Mark V suitcase with rapid deployment, capable of catching Tony in midair. And in Iron Man 3, Tony further builds on that flexibility by making each piece of his armor propulsive, and by the end of the movie, making the arc reactor separate from his flesh. And then coming back to Age of Ultron. So here, Tony introduces some awesome tech to address a past problem, Hulk security, with the Mark 44 Hulk Buster. But of course, Tony's Iron Legion drones get hacked by Ultron, who then derives Tony's tech, inserting the Mind Stone, and that process later leads to Vision. But the key lesson that Stark learns is that his tech and his suits are not as important as the person using that technology, a lesson that he passes on to Peter Parker in Homecoming. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it, okay? Gotta sound like my dad. Captain America's Civil War is a failure for Tony. He fails to rein in Cap, his tech fails against Ant-Man, he gets Rhodey hurt, but he starts to apply one critical lesson, legacy. He realizes that that younger generation of nerds like Peter Parker, sometimes those kids are worth listening to and trusting. We're on the snow planet? Ah. It's a walking thingy! Maybe the kids are onto something. That was Tony's failure in Iron Man 3. He ignored the nerdy fanboy Aldrich Killian until he grew up into a threat, which is a lesson that that nerdy kid Harley Keener helped him learn. So in Spider-Man Homecoming, Tony evolves into a teacher. He restrains Peter's suit with a training wheels protocol. And this, of course, is after Nick Fury and Natasha Romanoff chastised Tony for letting Rhodey pilot a suit with no restrictions. You, you let your friend fly away with your suit. Tony also installs warmers in Peter's suit after his Mark II armor froze over in the first movie. And after he almost got hypothermia in Iron Man 3. Peter's suit also comes with a GPS tracker so that Peter wouldn't get lost in foreign countries like Tony did. And that brings us to the biggest leap forward in Tony's armor in Infinity War. Now, yes, it has been a bit of a struggle to keep these daily doses of distraction coming at you from the Blue Dungeon Mark II. You don't know this, but these blue surfaces are endothermic. They like suck my energy. I actually think they're alive because they move sometimes. Anyway, the best way to keep my energy up is with a Bang Energy. Thanks to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Ooh. Every can of Bang is 16 ounces. That's right, there's no wimpy 12 ounce cans here. It contains 300 milligrams of caffeine, it's sugar-free and has zero calories, yet it tastes great. 
There are over 20 different flavors to choose from, and one of those great flavors is black cherry vanilla. You get that hint of vanilla, you get the hint of cherry, but also a deep dark blackness that gives you a deeper energy to fight whatever giant blue organism you're living in. Check out Bang on Instagram. You can get 25% off your order at bang-energy.com when you use the code NEWROCKSTARS25. There, you can buy cans of Bang Energy, including their sweet tea flavor, their keto coffee flavor, their sour head flavor. All their flavors, pretty good in their own ways. You can also get clothing, fitness supplements, and all kinds of stuff to be your best Bang self. Thanks again to Bang Energy for sponsoring this video. Get 25% off at bang-energy.com using the code NEWROCKSTARS25 and follow the creator of Bang on Instagram at bangenergy.ceo. Okay, so in Infinity War, Tony introduces the Mark 50 armor, which has a bunch of cool stuff, including an additional rocket booster to his thrusters so that he can quickly catch up to Peter on the Q-ship after he was unable to catch up to Rhodey in Civil War. But really, the cool part here is the nanotech. Tiny bots that lock into place as seamless armor, closing the gaps after Ant-Man shrunk down between the plates of his armor. Tony also equips himself with melee weapons after losing the melee with Cap and Bucky. But Tony also upgrades Peter's suit into the Iron Spider armor with pressurized oxygen flow for high altitude after Peter struggled against the airborne villain Vulture. Tony also gives Peter four additional armored arms, Waldos, after, you know, Peter could have used a few extra hands keeping that fairy from splitting apart in Homecoming. And then when we catch up to him in Endgame, Tony has managed to survive weeks on the Benatar with Nebula. They did have some food supplies, but it's possible he got some of his drinking water from himself. Back in Iron Man 2, he revealed a new urinary filtration system. You just keep the I know, it has a filtration yeah, system. You could drink that water. The time heist in Endgame showed that Tony was so aware of each generation of his past upgrades that he knew that in 2012, his Mark 7 armor did not yet have the Mark 50 nanobot going inside you. So in the old version, Ant-Man could still slip in there, and he knew that his arc reactor was still attached to his heart because this was before Iron Man 3, so that he could go into cardiac arrest if something happened, but he knew that this suit could still sustain an electric shock, so Thor's love tap wouldn't kill him. And so Tony's final in-game Mark 85 armor applied everything he learned, including the process that created Vision fusing his tech with Infinity Stones. His new Stark Tech gauntlet fixed his failure to claw the gauntlet off Thanos on Titan by using nanotech to absorb the stones from one part of his armor to another. So ultimately, Tony came full circle with what he described as the perfect weapon all the way back in his first film appearance. They say the best weapon is one you never have to fire. I respectfully disagree. I prefer the weapon you only have to fire once. And so Tony Stark finally built the weapon that he only had to fire once. But as genius as Stark was, he still left this world with plenty of oversights. He tried to leave Peter Parker with the perfect tech for a superhero who would need a heads up display in plain sight, since at that point the world still didn't know Peter was a superhero. But Tony's failure to appreciate the power of his own holotech left Peter susceptible to emotional manipulation via illusions by ex-Stark employees. And there's also room to improve on Tony's tech that could tell us how we will see this tech used next in the MCU. Really, the fatal flaw of Tony's final suit is that it's, well, Fatal. He died in it. So one improvement on this tech is protection from cosmic mysticism and radiation. The Ten Rings is coming back in the MCU in Shang-Chi, and they wanted Tony's weaponry for a reason, which I believe could be to wield the alien McLuhan magic of the Ten Rings. Tony's leftover nanotech gauntlet could be useful if improved to protect the wielder. We also know that Marvel's artists have drawn up visuals for the Iron Mage, Doctor Strange in the Iron Man armor, which in the comics is derived from Victor Von Doom, a man of science and a man of magic. As brilliant as Tony Stark was, he knew nothing about magic or mystical energy, he was limited by the technology of his timeline. And as we expand into a multiverse, there is a room for all kind of geniuses to learn how to spark that magic into his creations. Peter Parker, Victor Von Doom, Stephen Strange, The Ten Rings, Shuri, Harley Keener, Nate Richards Iron Lad, or of course, his daughter Morgan. Now, a reminder that you can join our Infinity Saga watch alongs twice a week with us on Discord by becoming a patron of New Rockstars at patreon.com slash new rockstars. Comment down below, follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching, bye.